Peter Hewitt, La Artistino. Today I'm going to show you how to colour in a Caucasian style face. Don't worry if you haven't got the right pencils or the same type of pencils I have because look around you. People's faces come in all different colours so that it doesn't matter if there's a bit of colour variation but I will show you exactly what you will need to start off with. Firstly I do recommend a nice blue grey pencil from uh, Derwent, the Derwent Artist range. If you don't have that use the Faber-Castell if you have Faber-Castell polychromous the dark indigo, indigo is a close match. If you're using budget style pencils it's going to be slightly more problematical to match but not impossible. The Refines, Marco Refines have a nice blue, it is the number 529. I'll demonstrate all these for you. Now I use these for shade, shading the, um, the darker shades. The using blue on skin will make it look more translucent and more alive. So there you go, there's the Derwent Artist Blue Grey. The Polychromous Indigo, as you can see it's a little bit cooler and a little bit darker. The Marco Refine 529s. Again, not a close match but it's good enough. It's a bit more blue tone but you can get away with it. As I said, all face skin is different coloured and, and there is room for a lot of variation. If you're using budget style pencils, I've got my Faber-Castell Classics here to represent that group and I think the best match I've got, I think it would have to be this one, the number 344s. Those, it's a, it's a very cool blue version. The other blues are just a little bit too bright. Okay, right, try and pick something, ignoring that little bit there, try and pick something similar to these, as close match as you can get to one of these. Preferably the warmer style blues, um, a cooler one if you haven't got a, a good match for these ones. They'll all work. They'll just give a little bit of colour variation. Okay, now that's for my blue shadows. Now for the actual skin tone itself, I've got here. Uh, Faber-Castell Light Flesh, that's the Polychromis, and the Faber-Castell Cinnamon. And if you want to see what these ones are like, the Light Flesh is like this. It's like light chicken meat, uncooked chicken meat, and it's kind of like a darker uncooked chicken meat. Right, again, if you're looking for matches for those, try your best. If you can't, close enough is good enough, and I'll show you what I mean. Here we have the closest I've got in my uh, Derwent Artist range. I don't have the full 120 Derwent Artist range. That's nice, that is very, very light and that'll do as well. Uh, you'll need a, a darker colour to go over the top, something more orangey and pink too, but that, that'll at least get you started. The Marco Refines, you're in a bit of luck here because the Marco Refines have a nice selection of skin tones here. They're a bit on the light side, but again, they'll do the trick. Yeah, that one's great. That one is the 518s. You've got the 519 as well. That's a lighter version. And you also have, I think this is a slightly more yellow version, the 520s. There. So they're great too. With the Faber Castell Classics, You've really got only this one, which is their 330s. And that's great. If you're using the uh, marker of fines and you've got hold of the Faber Castell Classics, grab this one out too, because it's a bit darker as well, just to go into your shadows. Now, the other color that I do recommend that you have is a dark neutral brown. And this is just to take the blue edge off the blue if you find it's a little bit too blue. It'll neutralize the color somewhat. Now in the Derwents, uh, the chocolate's good for this. It's nice and dark. You won't need very much of this at all. And if you don't want to go too dark, you can go the sepia. So anything that you can find in the browns, which is fairly um, thick, dark and neutral, sort of medium to dark and neutral will do the trick. 
Okay, let's begin. Now we've got some pencils selected. Have a look at the face. Now the first thing that I need to talk about is lighting. As you know, with my other tutorials, I have told you about how the light comes down, strikes an object and makes it a little bit lighter on the top surface and then casts a shadow on the bottom surface. How you colour in the face will depend on where you put your light source. Now, the most typical light source, or the easiest one, is just a sort of, now let's see, a direction sort of coming down onto the face from slightly above. This will light up the face evenly on both sides and the shadows will be fairly small but they will all be central. So that's the way I'm going to do this picture. If you're looking at another source of lighting, say you're going in from this side, I suggest that you look up photographs of faces where the lighting comes from this side and then look at where the shadows lay. Um, for instance, the nose shadow will go this way, will cast a shadow this way and it will be lighter on this side. But for this purpose, this drawing, I'm just going to do a frontal facing shadow which is sort of coming from above and in front and striking the face here. So the lightest part of the face will be the nose, the cheeks, the chin and the brow. Okay, let's begin. I like to begin the picture of a face by putting in my blue grey. Now sometimes I do things differently but in this particular instance I'm going to use this just so I can clarify with you where exactly the shadows go. You want to apply this lightly to start off with. Now the shadows of the face will occur on the hairline, under the eyebrows, under the nose, around the sides of the face and under the chin. So let's begin. I will start by blushing very lightly our blue just around the border of her hairline underneath all these beads. If she had hair falling across her face I would make a shadow of that hair with this blue colour. And as you can see, I'm doing it very gently. I'm not pressing hard. The idea with pencils is begin lightly and then increase as you need it. Right, now she's going to need some shading underneath all this decoration and jewellery that she's got on her face. So just add a few shadow casts with your blue. Actually, I've done it in the wrong spot there. I'll, don't do it there. That's a flower. I missed that. I'll go back and erase that in a second. So I'm just casting a shadow, keeping in mind where how the light's coming down. I probably don't need as much shadow here, but I'm thinking of the shadow these beads are casting. You can be more precise if you like. Now things that are sitting hard up against an object will cast a sharper shadow. Things that are a little bit distance away from an object, say the chin and the neck, will cast a softer shadow. It's a little illusion that you can play so that you can suggest how distant an object is from its background. And we'll sort of gently blush in here, I'll go a little bit firmer right at the edge and then let the shadow play down softer and softer until it disappears. Under these beads I'm just going to think about where the light would be striking them and then put the shadow there. Going back in and putting a little bit more depth right on the tiniest margin where those beads start.
around the border of the face because the light's striking the front of the face I want to put a little bit of shading to suggest that the face is round and it's sort of going um, how do I say this that it's uh, that's a three-dimensional object and therefore the side of the face isn't getting as much light as the center of the face so I'm just going to run a little bead of a little blush of this blue around the outside on either side of the face. Notice I'm keeping it very, very light. Sort of a little bit darker right on the perimeter and then gently blushing it out. Don't be afraid to go in with an eraser very gently if you find you're going too heavy. Now you've got your ears on either side, so you want to shade those a little bit, particularly here underneath this fold. I'm not quite certain of the anatomical names for the bits of the ears. I know this is the earlobe. So what I'm doing is making the shading quite dark next to the face, and then light in the middle here, and then just a little border of dark around the outside there. So you've got this little line of light here. And the same with the top part of this ear. Yeah. Go and do the same thing on the other side. Again, darkest, closest to the face. We, the face would cast a shadow over it. A bit of a perimeter there. And then blush it in so that you've got a line of light in the center. Yeah. Right, now you can see the sort of a a 3D feeling coming to the face now and we haven't touched any skin tones whatsoever yet we're just putting in the shading with the blue now I'm just shade underneath these flowers here I have to erase um, grab an eraser for that That's bugging me, I'm going to have to get my eraser. Now you must go lightly. Just everywhere where I've gone over the line, I'm just fixing now. Luckily this paper is absolutely marvellous paper. It's smooth but it takes the pencils very well and it erases well. Okay, now where else would you find shadow on a face? Well, the face sort of dips in a little bit here, sort of un underneath the eyebrows and around the side here at the sides of the eyes. You also get an area here which is highlighted and then you get shadow right here in the center. You get a little bit of shading down either side of the nose very gently because uh, light's coming down from here so this is going to be pretty minor. Underneath the nose you need shading. Uh, a little bit of the here in this little, I can't remember what it's called, it's a little bit here that forms when your face is forming. There's little, the little dippy lines there. Then underneath the lips, the corners of the mouth, and a little bit round here to show that the, the chin is sort of prominent. Now, let's see if we can add these. Again, this is just 
a gentle process and I'll start here with the sides of the eyes. darker here, lightening up to the centre bit here, where it'll be lightest, and then going dark again as you get into the corner of the eye, where it's sort of partially hidden by the nose. Now here's where you're going to have to do a little bit of guesswork as to where the nose is, whether it's a thick bridge nose or a thin bridge nose. So just, my advice is just apply it bit by bit until it looks right on either side, trying to keep both sides even. So you've got that bit there and that bit there. As you can see, even doing that has lent some more definition to the face. Go up to the eyebrow. I'm just blocking out where all the shading is in the in the face. Again, getting to this bit, which is a bit with the light striking it a bit heavier, so this is going to be brighter. And then at this side, we're going dark again at the corner, outer corner of the eye. Another area which is darker is this crease here where the eyelid and the underneath the eyebrow meet. That's going to be a bit darker too, so just darken that up. Now we go down the nose. Now because of where the light is coming from, we don't want to go too heavy with this. Down here, see how I've got that little line just there? Just there. That's a little edge, the top leading edge of the bottom lid sticks out a little bit further, so that's going to catch the light, but immediately underneath it, is in slight shadow, so you want to put that in too for a more realistic look. not getting too fussy about making it even here I just want to get the shadows laid down so I can see where they are soften that up around the bridge of the nose there a little bit so it's not quite so intense and soften it up as it goes over the cheek feel it's gone too dark again don't be afraid to go in with an eraser and just lighten it up now I think that's good for the eyes let's go down and do the nose now the Bits of the nose that will be in shadow is the corners here. Now if you notice in a nose, you've got kind of like, if you think about the way it's built, think of it as being three little balls. You've got one bigger ball in the centre here, which is the point of the nose, and then you've got these nostril flares. Think of them as two little balls on either side. If you think about it that way, the placement of the shadows will become more obvious. For instance, if I just Pretend there's a little ball there, and I can just colour around the outside of it, shade around the outside of it, another little ball there, and shade around the outside of it, and there's your nostril flares. Okay, and then you've got the big ball in the centre here. There, 
three balls one two three and that will shape the end of your nose now again you can do different shapes you can make them have big nostril flares or small ones little dainty ones you can have a thick nose or a thin nose you could decide yourself at this stage I'm going to shade it in a bit more the less white you leave leave in the center the thinner the nose will look the more white you leave in the center the thicker the nose will look Okay, now you'll notice with this, I haven't gone right to the tip of the nose. I've actually left a little highlight there. I find it looks a little bit more dynamic if I do it that way. Now, directly underneath the nose, of course, looking around her nose ring, is where you're going to have the darkest shadow here. Because the nose, the light's coming down here, it's striking, whoops, striking the top of the nose, and then you're getting a shadow directly underneath it where the nose overhangs the top of the lip. Now the top of the lip, as I said, has got this little, these two little lines with this dip in the center. It has got a real name and I do normally know it, but you just want to very lightly suggest it. Don't go heavy with this. If you're not comfortable doing it, don't do it at all, but just very lightly suggest this little um, feature of the face. Now, next part you're going to find shadow is the corner of the lips. Just where the end of the mouth is, it sort of, it's like a dimple, sort of pulls back into the, underneath the cheek. So you want to do a little bit of shading just here. As you can see, that helps to push the mouth out and give you that sensation that there is a you know where the mouth ends. It also makes a smile a bit more too when you do that. Next part that you'll need to shade is right under the bottom lip. Yeah again go fairly heavy to start off with. When I say fairly heavy I don't mean push hard I mean sort of like light heavy just make it its heaviest there directly underneath the bottom lip and then shade out a little bit. Again, you know how I was talking about the balls for the centre of the nose? Well, think of the chin as being a, another ball, sort of slightly ovalish ball lying on its side. And when you put the shading in, suggest an oval shape here. Now, if you want her to have a cleft in her chin, you can just add that too. That could look quite effective. I don't know if I'll do that or not, but I was just showing you. you just add a little bit of shade down the center so that she can have a cleft chin. I don't think I'll do that myself but you certainly can. Make it very light though it's subtle very subtle. Be prepared if it doesn't look right to, to rub out a little bit to adjust the depth of the, the color. And I've made this one a little bit too dark on this side so I'll just rub it out a bit and add a little bit more. And I've got a little bit of suggestion here, as you can see, of a chin, just a teeny bit up the sides. Okay, that's the shading for the face. The lips, we want a little bit of a shading right underneath the top lip here, where it hits the bottom lip. And in the corners of the lips too. Have an eraser handy while you do this. <laughs> okay, just going to shape the cheek a little bit by pulling in the shading a bit more, and the same with this side. As you can see, I've chosen to do this with the blue. If you like, you can experiment by doing this with the darker, darkest of your skin tones, or with a brown, or with a purple, depending on your lighting. I find blue is a nice 
colour because it does, as I said, make the skin look more translucent. Now directly under the chin, because your light's coming down this way, it's going to cast a shadow down the centre of the neck. Again, it's going to be fairly dark underneath the chin. It's going to be roughly chin shaped, just slightly more elongated. Fading out. Sometimes I just see something and I just have to jump up there and fix it. There we go. right under the chin and I'm lightening out as I go down. Now I'm going to do a little bit of shading around the neck just around the sides. right up in the corners. Apologies, I just realized this was off camera. All I've done here is just add shading around the bottom here, darkest right at the base and gradually lightening up into the neck. can see we now have all the shading put in but she does look a little bit blue doesn't she so let's get going with the skin tones now this is a bit of playing around of adding bits of color here and there until you've got the right feel for it what you're going to think of now is where the light will be striking the face and leaving them the lightest and as you merge into the shadows getting them darker and darker so what I'm going to do is I'll start with the forehead again and we'll start to blush in the actual colour of the face which is the flesh tone. This is the lightest flesh tone, this is my light flesh. This part of the forehead here is where the light's going to be striking at the most so you want to leave it the lightest and then as you go around the sides is where you're getting darker. So 
So for the sides, I'm going to switch to my darker flesh tone, which is this, this one is the cinnamon. And I'll go over it and add a little bit more cinnamon there. As you can see, it's taking the blue out of the blue. It's not making, it's, it's lightening the blue a little bit, so it's not quite as bluish. And you start to see what looks like a more natural skin tone. over this with a fairly medium pressure just so I can impregnate that darker pink. Let's smear it a little bit, I don't know why. Look at that. And lightening up where the natural light would strike just underneath the eyebrow. You may not like to put um, some eyeshadow on yours. It's quite doable. You just follow the same rules of where the shadows and the highlights are, but just choose your eyeshadow. Again, good method. Look up a photograph to get the um, places where it's best to put the colours. This is now a matter of just switching back and forward between your um, shades of flesh tone to get a gradient from the darkest areas that you've coloured in blue to the lighter areas.
okay that's a fairly rough job I could spend another hour just gently going over and smoothing things but I think that's good enough for now as you can see I've used the cinnamon to put in most of the, the darker skin tones to start off with connecting up all the blue that I've put in before with the blue grey and uh, then I took my um, light flesh tone and I use it as a blender pencil and everything together and also to blush in right into those highlights there leaving the very center of the highlights white so just there so now as you can see the highlights you have are quite distinct you've got the two cheeks you've got the nose you've got the point of the nose and a little bit of highlight on either side of the nostrils just underneath here on the sides of the mouth the chin up here underneath the eyebrows and the forehead if it wasn't for this piece here the forehead would be a large patch of highlight I probably shaded in lightly with the uh, light flesh just until the little bit at the center but um, because it's such a large area and it is covered with this uh, decoration here I've allowed the highlights to be at either side of the decoration now a couple of things we're going to do here your blues may be too blue and I certainly feel they are a little bit too blue uh, you could leave them the way they are or you could dull the blue by using a nice dull brown and in this case I'm going to use my Derwent sepia so what I'll do is right at the corners of where the blue is I'm going to go around and just blush in a bit of brown over the top and that'll look at make it look more skin tone and less blue but we will still have a nice undertone of blue to give it a translucent look. Now this paper in the book is very smooth so I'm having to go carefully here with a light pressure. But you can see how hopefully it's just this tiny little shade of sepia, a dull brown over the top has killed the blue there and made it more of a natural tone just got very dark around the eyes very mysterious looking and I'll go through and gently blush in the brown all the areas I've got blue to lessen the bluish feel just gently 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 blushing it into the skin tones around the eyes here are the darker tones underneath the nose and underneath the lip around the edges and under the chin and of course the ears on either side because they're more or less in shadow This does look quite dark but I promise you when the rest of the colors are in it will just look fine
side that's most of the brown in. Now if you like you can go back across with your darker flesh tone, the cinnamon and the light flesh and just help to blend and smooth it all in. You could do this with a blender pencil if you like but as you want the overall feeling of the face to be flesh tone you can just use the lightest colour that you've used which is the light flesh tone. I'll just do a little bit of it here over the most troublesome spots that I can see but you can spend ages just going over and tweaking everything and checking that both sides of the face are symmetrically coloured. This is quite an advanced tutorial and I do apologise to anybody who's getting frustrated. This is not something you'll be able to do first off perfectly. This is something that will take a lot of practice. There. Now, that's to me still a bit of a rough dog job, but for a colouring book page, I think that's not bad at all. Okay, do a bit more on the neck here, that's looking a bit scruffy. And don't be afraid to dab away gently at a, with a um, eraser if it's not if it's looking a little bit dark in places or you're not happy. Yeah. Now I think what we'll move on to next is putting some colour in her cheeks. Right now she doesn't have any blush in her cheeks. Now for that I prefer to use a nice pink, a pinkish red. Now there is a variety of different pinks that you can use and get away with quite nicely. Uh, everyone's got different shades of pink on their cheeks. So what I would suggest is nothing too bright if you could. Something more of a like a bit of a burgundy sort of feel to it, used very lightly, works better I think than a bright bright pink. Here you go, here's three I think will work pretty well and I'll show you the colours so you can match them up with something else that you've got if you don't happen to have any of these. I'll only use one or two of these, um, that's the Burnt Carmine, I'll just chuck her over there. That's a kind of that kind of colour which is a nice blush for a face. If you want a little bit brighter, I've got this one here which is the Rose Meadow Lake. That's a little bit of a brighter pink there. And that one's from the Derwent range and this one is the Rose Carmine from the Faber Castell Polychromis range. So any one of those will do your job or something fairly similar. You don't want anything too red, you don't want anything too bright and you don't want anything too light go with the burnt carmine and I'm just going to gently now where the cheek blush usually is and it varies from face to face but I think the elegant most elegant solution I think is one that comes sort of down this way from the cheekbones following the line of the cheekbones so what you want to do again you're going very light here very very light and you don't want defined pencil marks here you just want a blush. I might just put something underneath my hand here. This is where it helps to have pencils that layer very well. And cheaper pencils don't tend to layer well and this picture really needs, the way I'm doing it really needs something that you can lay at least four or five layers over each other. I'm coming in right from the side there, as you can see, right from where the ear is, underneath the eyelid, margin under the eye, and coming across this freckled area. I'm going to actually poke into this white area just a little bit, keeping in mind that that's highlighted and therefore you can't do a dark pink there because it's going to ruin the effect of there being a highlight there. As you can see this is very subtle but on the other side you've got this kind of like a almost uh, you know uniform kind of colored skin that looks a little bit dead over here you've got this nice little blush 
of pink, making it darker so that it shows right where um, the darkest parts are and then just slightly blushing out. Do this slowly and gradually. Look at your work until you're happy with how much you've got there. Remember it's always easier to add more than to take away. And I will just give it a little bit in this band here and that is plenty of blush for this face, the way that I'm doing it. And do the same on the other side. cheekbones, brought her to life a bit more. Now the other place that you'll find a little bit of pink is on the tip of the nose and occasionally just a little bit on the chin. I'm just going to do the tip of her nose and this is again is going to take a rather deft touch. Very very lightly apply making sure to uh, preserve your highlight. Just put in a little blush. This is subtle but effective. Okay, I'll just extend that pink down a little bit more. There. Okay, now we've got a bit of colour in our cheeks. We will start on the eyes. The whites of the eyes do look white, but in real life they have a bluish tinge to them, sort of a, a light cyan blue. You've also got the corners of the eyes where you've got the little fleshy bits where the tear ducts sort of poke out and those you will need to colour in uh, flesh and a sort of a pinky look. So I'm going to give my rose carmine a little go here. Remember that's that colour but I'm just going to use it very lightly to bring out the tear ducts here. Just add in a bit more pink there. And then I'll go for my darker cinnamon. Just to reduce the pinky look and make it more like a fleshy, fleshy look. Yeah. So a little bit, and this might darken some of the details here with the burnt carmine again. That's the Polychromus. There. Now we've got the corner of her eyes looking right. I'm going to put the blue shading and for that I'll use, I'll start off with uh, the light cobalt turquoise in the Polychromus range. If you remember I've got this one here which is the identical colour but it's the old pencil so it's called aquamarine so if you've got an old set of polychromis it's the aquamarine you're after and, hang on, as I demonstrated not too well there there it is it's that kind of colour now this you just want to put underneath the eyelids and in the corners of the eyes just a teeny little bit along the bottom of the bottom eyelid. Starting to make the eye look a bit rounder. And now I'm going to go in with my uh, blue-gray again or you can use the dark indigo and very very carefully just shade in right to the edge there just over the top of that blue 
If yours is looking a bit too bright, you can go in with a grey as well. Or a teeny bit of brown to kill the blue. When I say kill the blue, I don't mean actually physically killing the blue, I mean just, just dulling it down a little bit. Yeah. Now, what colour do we want her eyes? I'm going to say green. Now, the trick with eyes, a couple of things. You want to leave white highlight. Sometimes that's easier to put in afterwards with a white gel pen. You also want to make it darker here at the top where the eyelid, the top eyelid is shading and the eyebrow is shading the eye and you want it lighter here in the iris down the bottom where it's catching more of the light. So let's go for a couple of shades of green. Here's something that you really don't have to worry too much about what colour you pick as long as it goes in with your colour scheme. You can do purple if you like or, or any other fantastic colour. There we go, I'm going to use this green which is the, let's have a look, the Polychromis Permanent Green Olive and this lighter one which is the Polychromis Earth Green Yellowish. Now I'll start off putting the highlight in, which I'll run down the bottom here. Which will be the lightest part of the eye. And then I'll take the dark pencil and go underneath the eyelid here. I don't think that's going to be quite dark enough, so I might have to go in with something darker to darken it down a bit more. But just blend it in there. Now if you can, just make a teeny little line around the outside of the lighter pencil there. I'll be going in later with a gel pen just to pick out and nut the highlights properly. Putting the little white sparkle in eyes brings them to life. It'll turn a dull eye into a bright shiny eye. And it just brings the, the drawing or the, the face to life, whether it's a, um, a human or an animal or a fantasy creature. There, now I'm going to have to go a little bit darker with those eyes, I think. Let's see what have I got here. Chrome Oxide Green, what are you going to do for me? Put that in just underneath where the eyelid is. There we go. It's amazing how when you colour the eyes, the picture comes to life. Just shade it down a little bit the sides. I said any combination of three colours will do as, one, as long as one is light, one's medium and one's dark. And just apply it lightest here, the medium and then darkest right underneath the eyelid. And try for extra effect if you've got the room to put a little bit of dark right around the outer rim here. If you look at eyes, real eyes, you'll find there is a tiny bit of darker area right around that, the rim of the iris there. There, okay, now she's got some real interesting eye-popping eyes. I'm just going to extend a little bit of the shading down into the white here. There, a bit more shadow, yep, I like that. Now I use the blue, I, I'll grab the dark indigo, but I just as well using the blue gray as well to do that. Just a bit switchy there. Again, play around till you get it right. There. A little bit of blue tone over the top of that tear duct to recess it back in. Okay, that's looking pretty good.
You just want to play around very gently and lightly until you've got it just the way you want it. There. Okay, there's some very penetrating eyes there. Okay, finally we'll look at doing the lips. Now the lips, uh, when you think of lips you think of the red um, lipstick lips but I'm looking for a more natural look. So I'll be looking to use the same colours that we used in the little tear ducts of the eyes. So I'm going to still go with my um, uh, cinnamon. I want to use my rose carmine and I will go with the burnt carmine as well. They're all in the polychromous range. I'll just show again what those colours look like and you can match them up with something that you've got similar. There's the burnt carmine, is the dark um, chicken flesh colour. This is a lovely, oh it's just such a gorgeous pink that. And this colour, and I think that combination is going to look very nice on the lips. Now lips are shiny. The shiniest part of the lip will be this centre section along here where it catches the light. If you want to have a kind of a made up lipstick look you want this to be very shiny and um, with very well defined end edges. Um, easily achieved with a white gel pen. If you want a more natural look then you'll need it to be lightly blushed in the same way as we've done the cheek and the chins. Okay, let's start with the darker colour. Now remember we've already laid a faint foundation down of the blue-grey. So you can just go over the top of that into the corners. edge of the lip there. This slightly unnatural colour because I want to accentuate it a little bit more. So it'll be a slightly brighter pink than what you would see in real life. You can adjust with your own colours to match the sort of feel that you want. If you're going for a lipstick look just choose the colours in terms of a lipstick colours. So you'd go for maybe a brighter red or a coral pink or something along those lines. Or even, you know, orange, green, blue. Lipstick comes in all different colours. Right, now you can see underneath the top lip I've made the shading dark and with a more of a defined edge. At the bottom here I've made the shading dark but I've brought the edge up gently and blended it in with the white. Okay now this will give the lip definition. Now it looks like it's rounded with this bit sticking out a bit more. The top lip is more in shadow. I'll just define the edge of the top lip nice and dark and of course where it goes into the mouth itself. Nice and dark and here you can see the blue that we loaded down before is coming in to its own and giving it a bit of a purpley colour to give it a nice natural looking shadow. And now I'm just going to blush in the sides and the middle of the lip here you've got this little little tiny sort of sticky outy bit here. So think of a ball just there, a tiny little ball directly underneath this part of the mouth and then blush that in to the sides. carmine and I'm going to blush over the top of that particularly where it's starting to shade into the white just to give it another brighter accent of colour here. There you can 
edges. Put some little lines going down, following these lines here, like that. For a more natural look, you've got these little lines that radiate out. And I'm just going to fill in here a little bit and make it look very subtle, the highlights on the top lip. It's pretty good. Actually, I should really leave that. It's quite good. I'm, I'm, my fussiness is coming in here. You can tweak and play with these things for hours if you want. Really, that's, that's pretty good. Sure that looks rounded. So you've got the little highlight going across there and a very natural looking lip. If you want you can go back in now with your burnt carmine and just darken some of the corners up a little bit more. There you have lips as well. Okay put you back in the center lady and this will conclude today's tutorial on how to color in faces I'll look at completing this face in a later tutorial but for now we'll leave it at that I hope you have a lot of fun with all the coloring adventures you're currently on and until next time happy coloring Hope you're enjoying any colouring adventures that you are currently on and until next time, happy colouring!